Hello, welcome back to the channel. My name is Jason. Now, the Bortle scale is one of those videos I wish I didn't have to make because what the Bortle scale is, if you're not familiar with it, is a scale for measuring light pollution, the bane of all astronomers' lives. Now, this is quite a, it just shows you how, how much of a growing problem light pollution is because the Bortle scale has only been around in the last few years. In fact, it was first published by John E. Bortle, um, an American amateur astronomer, in the February edition of um, the 2001 February edition of Sky and Telescope mag magazine. And he, he p published this article on the, p the Bortle scale, basically, and it's the one that we use today. Now, it's a simple scale to understand. It just ranges, or it's on like a, a class uh, that starts between one and nine. Class 1 skies are basically the, the darkest skies on Earth and Class 9 skies are the brightest, most light polluted skies on Earth, the, the inner cities. Now it is useful to uh, know what your sky conditions are or your bottle. Um, I'll get on to uh, how you can actually find your sky uh, uh, bottle in, in, a, in a short while. Uh, but um, especially for a visual astronomer such as myself and you like hunting for the deep sky targets. Now there's absolutely no point at all hunting for the very faint deep sky targets if you live in bottle skies which are like seven and above. Um, it's just not going to happen. If you live in skies seven and above there's still a lot of astronomy you can do. There's certainly some of the uh, brightest deep sky targets that you're still going to be able to see, such as the Orion Nebula, Andromeda, the Pleiades, the, uh, you know, those sort of uh, brighter deep sky targets. But the fainter ones, such as like the Crab Nebula and, uh, and things like that, maybe even uh, the Ring Nebula on seven and above, you're going to struggle with in most size, you know, in most average size telescopes. But when you come to the mid-range of the Bortle scale, which I would say the vast majority of us are, and that's round about the six, um, five, maybe five and above. Um, and it's like we, we, we pretty much all live near or close to towns or cities, and you wouldn't believe how much that really does affect the dark skies. They may look like, I mean, your local town might or city may be three or four miles away, five miles away, but that's dramatically going to affect that part of the skies, which you've, you've probably already found out. But in the Bortle uh, places, around about, you know, five and above, or shall I say between five and seven, you're going to get your, your deep sky targets are going to start opening up a little bit. And you are going to see, you'll definitely see the, um, the Ring Nebula, the Crab, uh, sorry, not the Crab Nebula, the... Um, Dumbbell Nebula, which are t uh, a lot fainter and uh, a lot more high, harder to find than the obvious ones, such as the Orion Nebula, which are going to be pretty easy to find, like I say, even in light polluted skies. But around the mid range, again, you know, there's no point on going for the really, really faint deep, deep sky targets if you're anywhere above five. And it doesn't even really matter if you've got a bigger telescope. I'll get onto that in a, in a short while. So if we go right down to the um, to the uh, start of the scale, if you like, when, when we're going like you know four and below, these are ideal sky conditions. And to be honest, if you're lucky enough to live in bottle skies four and below, there's not a lot you won't be able to see. And I've always said, even if you, I mean, if you take a, a, at any telescope down to really good dark locations, you can sort of add two inch of aperture to it. Um, it really does make that much difference. Um, in bottle skies of round, like say four and below, binoculars are going to work fantastically. I mean, binoculars just in normal skies are, are, are great. I love binocular astronomy, but you take a pair of binoculars to some dark skies, and I do mean dark skies, it's unbelievable. So if you are lucky enough, you know, that you live in these uh, um, darker skies, like I say, five and below, Sky's the limit, if you pardon the pun, and um, most telescopes will show you quite a lot of uh, delights up there, and there'll not be a lot that you won't be able to see. 
Now we've just mentioned telescopes and aperture of telescopes and it is important if you're going, going out to or thinking about buying a new telescope um, to know your portal because there's no point in buying a big telescope if you've got high bottles um, um, class of sky. If you're above um, seven or you know six and seven range don't go above an eight inch telescope because there's absolutely no point. Um, an eight inch telescope is perfect for all sky conditions in my opinion. In, in my opinion, it's the perfect size telescope. But if you can afford it and, and you can say maybe afford a 12 inch telescope and you live in bottle skies of eight, you're never going to get to use that telescope to its full potential. The reason being is the big misconception. I know we all talk about size does matter in astronomy. Uh, the bigger the telescope, the better it, it, the more things you'll see basically. But there is a thing called aperture fever. Don't go too big, even if you can afford it. And especially if you live in light polluted skies. And the misconception is that yes, bigger telescopes are better uh, because people think they magnify more. In fact, they don't. It's the eyepiece that magnifies the image in any telescope. What a telescope's job is, is to gather light. I've said it before on this channel, but still of you may not have heard this before. Telescopes gather light. So if you've got a great big light bucket collecting, now it's only supposed to be collecting starlight or planet light or moonlight. But unfortunately, I'm that on light polluted skies, you're collecting all that other pollution as well. That's what the telescope is doing. Now this is simply just going to, like I say, if you've got a big 12 inch light bucket, light polluted skies, it's just going to be like turning the contrast way up. You, you're gonna have enough aperture to actually grasp that image, but there's gonna to be too much artificial stray light coming into the telescope, which is just gonna drown it out. The other thing about big telescopes is actually getting to use them um, and being bothered to use them because you may have already found out sometimes there's only a very small window of opportunity in the break of clouds and uh, a smaller telescope is so much easier to just get out and start using as we're dragging a you know a 10 12 inch big telescope about sometimes you think can I be bothered there's an old saying in this uh, hobby, uh, and the best telescope is the telescope you use the most. It's as simple as that. And I know many people uh, over the time who have had big telescopes and they hardly ever use them. Um, you know, simply the conditions don't allow it or they just, like I say, think, well, it's so much easier to just get my little five inch telescope out than it is that great old uh, monstrosity in the corner. So as you can see, just knowing your bottle scale can actually save you a bit of time and definitely money if you're thinking about buying a telescope. So how can you find out what your bottle is where you live? Well, these days it's really easy. A quick search on the internet and you'll, you'll still you'll find it. But uh, my go-to app um, is one I've mentioned on this channel before. It's a free app. I think it's available on both um, iOS and Android. And it's called Clear Outside. Now, uh, it's a weather app. It's a weather station. Um, and it'll give you a, a good forecast for the entire evening. It's, it's the weather app I use most. Um, but as you can see, if you just look at the top of that um, app there, um, once you've... Uh, inputted your coordinates you'll get your bottle and it'll just come up there um, so that's a really easy quick way I'll leave a link to that app in the description easy way of finding out what your um, uh, bottle scale is well that's another video all wrapped up thank you so much for watching if you've watched this far I just want to say a quick massive thank you to all the uh, super thanks uh, you may have noticed that uh, in the just below my videos there is a, a, a YouTube's introduced this new thing it's a super thanks and it's just simply if you just say I really enjoyed your video yeah they, there you go Jay buy yourself a drink and uh, it's very very much of a appreciated and a few of you have been uh, doing it and you know you are and I uh, I just want to say a massive thank you and like I say it is so much appreciated
Well, folks, don't forget, um, if you've enjoyed the video, to hit that thumbs up button. Uh, maybe subscribe. If you haven't subscribed, I do do regular videos. Uh, but to hit the no notifications, I know I'm sounding like a bit of a stuck record at the minute, but my videos are a bit up and down and all over the place at the minute. I am hoping to get everything balanced out so uh, and get more of an, a regular thing. I like to get at least a video a week out. So don't forget, hit that notifications bell and you'll not miss the next one. In the meantime, folks, take good care of yourselves and I will see you on the next one. Bye for now.